Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, those of you that uh, have missed us, we appreciate that. Those of you that have been glad that we're gone, go do something else, okay? But we are here today with Dr. Ivan Nanchev. Uh, Ivan has come over here from uh, Deutschland, and what he is here to do is to learn about uh, what we do with barbell training and take it back and apply it in hopefully uh, a portion of his practice in uh, in Germany. Thanks for coming, Yvonne. So, uh, it's a pleasure. What, well, it's our pleasure. Yeah. He's been with uh, Dr. Sullivan for three or four days up in Michigan. He came down. Uh, we're we're taping this on a Friday. He came down yesterday to hang around with John Janicek down in Dallas. And uh, he's uh, come up here today, and we've been, uh, we ate lunch and just been fooling around having coffee and discussions and stuff like that. So what, Yvonne, what gave you the idea to come over here and investigate this? Well, first of all, I want to thank you that uh, you are so glad to, so kind uh, to, to meet me. Um, as you well, said, what was I going to do? Kick you out? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, but yeah. I mean, I just, I just gave it a try. I, I, I wrote you an email about uh, ten days ago and asked mm -hmm. if uh, I could uh, come along, and you said, "Yeah, sure, come along." Let's. Well, we're let's always see. happy to have people who are yeah. interested enough in what we yeah. do to come all the way yeah. over here who intend yeah. to take this information mm -hmm. back and yeah. help people yeah. with it. So yeah. we're well, glad you're here. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Well, I'm, an, I'm a doctor. I'm a specialist in internal medicine. I live in Germany, about 35 miles south of Munich. And I work as a general practitioner. I have my own office. And uh, yeah, every day I come to see people with uh, various uh, serious uh, medical problems like uh, hypertension, diabetes, uh, obesity, or just uh, problems like uh, lower back pain or knee pain, which I suppose everyone after the age of 40 or 50 has. Mm -hmm. and, Almost uh, without exception. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's to make it to make a long uh, story short. I started uh, barbell training about a year ago. Um, I came to it through my elder son, who is a ski coach, and he told me, "Pops, you're getting older. You're 50 now." We have to do something, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, well, fifty is such a critical age, you know. Before that, you, right. s you yeah, fifty is, is fifty. Yeah. It begins to occur to yeah. you that, you know, when I was thirty, I'd never thought I'd be fifty, yeah. and here I am, fifty, yeah. so I must be old. Oh, I yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah and that's uh, how I came to to strength training. I have never done had never done strength training before. I would say the, the heaviest object I had to lift was a pencil in my, in my work. And so mm -hmm. the upper body was weak and uh, I had shoulder problems, uh, lower back uh, pain. And so I started uh, strength training at home uh, in the basement uh, with my kid. And after three, four workouts, I realized that something is changing with me. And so I said to myself, OK, perhaps this is uh, something good for you, perhaps good for your patients. And I said, okay, let's give it a try. I'll be my patient number one. Mm -hmm. And I'll try this uh, theory, this uh, method of uh, strength training first on me before I can recommend it to others. Right. And what happened? Yeah, what happened? The pain went away. I got stronger. Uh, it helped me a lot. How and long did it take for your back to stop hurting? I think four weeks. And it was, uh, it was gone. Chronic it, it pain. Was, it was chronic pain. Years and years and years. Years, at least twenty years of chronic pain. It was it was normal for me to have it. Right. Yeah. So it 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 it, it wasn't so bad that I had to see other colleagues or so on. But it was always there. Mm -hmm. Every single. Always day. in the back of your always mind. Always in the back of my mind, and uh, somehow. I had forgotten about it, then it, was, it got worse, 
but after four weeks of, of, of exercise, it simply disappeared after 20 years. And those of you that read the board understand that this is normal. This is the normal presentation for an introduction to barbell training with back pain. This is absolutely normal. And your knees, too. And the, the same was with my knees. Uh, we live in a very beautiful area in Bavaria, close to the mountains. The problem for me was I could hike up, walk up the mountains, but I wasn't able to descend mm -hmm. because of knee, knee pain. pain. Yeah. Right. So I couldn't go up the mountains. Right. And uh, then uh, one day we went up and I was able to go down again without any serious problems. And it was like a miracle for me too. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. We, we <laughs> see this. See, and, and those of you that watch the podcast yeah. on a regular basis, read the board, understand that, that this is, again, normal for what we do. But the interesting thing is that the general population feels exactly the opposite about it. The general population has been told by their doctors that if your back hurts, don't lift anything. Mm -hmm. If your knees hurt, don't lift anything. And this is not just wrong. It's 180 degrees, yes. complete, yeah. absolute yeah. opposite yeah. day from the actual yeah. truth of the matter. And uh, so the question is, Yvonne, what do you intend to do about this? Yeah, well, that was... You're a very powerful man if you think you're going to change the conventional wisdom by yourself. Uh, what are your plans here? No, I, I simply think that this, this uh, method of strength training, which isn't something new, no. you haven't invented something, no. you just bought, brought it to paper. Right. I mean, these are basic uh, human movements. Yeah? Designed uh, to be the most basic yeah. human movements that we can make. Ev everyone has to s sit down to the toilet. He has to squat. He has to get up again. We have to pick something up from the floor. Okay. Yeah. In, Bava pick. in Bavaria, yeah. we have to pick sure. up 20 bottles of beer. Right, so, right. That so must it, be a challenge. So when I explain and, that and to the my... And shoveling snow and... To my know, Bavarians, they understand that yeah, this is yeah. very important. Yeah. Very important because of beer. Yeah. Oh, because of beer. Right. And uh, I, I liked your method because it was logical, it was simple, it's easy, safe, and most important, it works. Every it's, time. And so I decided I have to go to the States to see how the doctors do it, Dr. Sullivan. Yeah. Right. And then I took the chance and said, okay, well, if I'm in Detroit already, might as well come down I'll here. might as well come to Dallas well, and see Mr. Ripiter. Well, this is an interesting statement because of the doctors in the United States, a handful are actually doing this. Uh, many of them are associated with us and uh, have uh, come to understand that, that this method does in mm -hmm. fact work. But the norm here is the same as the norm there. The advice is to not do something with a body part that hurts. And I, you know, it, it this is one of these things that seems correct, mm -hmm. but is wrong. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. Wrong. Life yeah. is, is uh, replete yeah. with examples of yeah. such things. It seems yeah. perfectly logical. It seems true, yeah. but it's wrong. Yeah. And I don't know how to punch through this. Um, yeah, you have we, to get yeah, to the doctors. You, you, you have, have to, to get to the doctors. You have You've to, got to get them in the gym. Yeah. You've got to get their achy back yeah. on a deadlift. Yeah. You've got to make them do it for yeah. four times. And then you've got to demonstrate to them yeah. personally that this makes your yeah. back feel better. You had it demonstrated to you. Yeah. But the problem is everybody else. It's mm -hmm. all the other doctors yeah. that are perfectly yeah. content yeah. to pursue... Yeah the conventional yeah. wisdom and yeah. pretend like it's true when, I mean, it's, I know when it's not true. I know a lot of, uh, ortho, uh, of physiotherapists and, 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 and surgeons who actually know that the th what they are doing doesn't help. I do I too. I mean, they prescribe, I do uh, too. They prescribe uh, medication, uh, they make the whole diagnostic procedure, but actually the only thing which happens is you keep the patient in the medical system. You don't help him. 
Right. Yeah. And what they always yeah. say about this is the interesting thing to me is what they what they yeah. always say, and we hear this from uh, uh, from our friend pluripotent on the web website. Uh, he'll be the first one to tell you. They won't do it. Mm -hmm. The patients will not do it. Some fat person mm -hmm. with back pain mm -hmm. comes into your office. You're the doctor. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to do something for him. You know yeah. that deadlifts and squats will fix this. Yeah. We'll fix everything that's wrong with yeah. the guy. We'll fix his blood sugar, yeah. all his other lab values, fix his knees, yeah. fix his back. You tell him to do it, and what's he going to say? Don't you just have a pill? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and this is a this is a yeah. profound yeah. limitation yeah. that that you and I both work mm -hmm. with every day. It's, uh, and as I've said many times, we're narrow casting. Mm -hmm. and, and by narrow casting, let's, let's, let's clarify. We're broadcasting. We're actually broadcasting. You and I are both broadcasting. Okay. <laughs> but it's being received yeah. by a narrow yeah. wavelength. Yeah. We're, we're in fact, mm -hmm. in effect, we're narrow yeah. casting. Yeah. And our intent is to broadcast. Mm -hmm. But we can't punch through because of resistance, not only in the patient population, but in the medical profession as well, because the medical profession is, um, they perceive that they're doing the right thing, don't they? But I think the, the, the system and uh, of, of, of starting strength uh, is far too important to keep silent. Yes. And, and just to say, okay, we, we're, we're not able to do anything, the patients won't accept it. Um, perhaps, yes, perhaps now, but uh, I think it's far too important uh, to keep silent. And uh, what I also think is that, uh, at least for me, in my, in my um, uh, profession, I think that I have now for the first time a tool with which I really can help many people in many different uh, situations of their life. Right. Yeah. Uh, if they I, will just use it. I don't have such a super pharmacological pill. Right. No. No. Isn't there, that interesting? It doesn't exist. What we do so, is so much yeah. more powerful than any yeah. pill yeah. that will ever be invented yeah. because our method yeah. uh, uh, approaches the whole organism yeah. and a yeah. pill approaches exactly. one, one pathway pathway it's like if you would train only one muscle of right. your body yeah. right and nonetheless people are well Yvonne people are lazy and yeah. I you know and maybe they don't all need to be saved but the ones that are not lazy the ones that are that are there's a there's a sizable population of people who will take their doctor's yeah. advice and run, yeah. who will take their doctor's advice and walk, yeah. who will take their doctor's advice and do some type of exercise mm -hmm. that is less than optimum. Yeah. These are the people yeah. we need to reach. Exactly. I tell my patients, you only have one car to drive. Yeah? You're in your body. If you like it or not, yeah? you can try to maintain this vehicle. You cannot say in two or three years, I will change it. I will drive another car. Yeah? Right. So if you try and fix all the problems, then you can drive with this car until you're 70, 80, 90 and above. Mm -hmm. uh, and you will drive yes. an old timer, perhaps. Everything will be a little slower. Right. But you will climb every mountain. And even the young ladies will look at you if you are driving uh, Nice old timer. A nice old car. Yeah, exactly. The the ladies seem to be interested in that. So the uh, the interesting thing is that doctors continually seem to be in deep love with the idea that long, slow distance is the best mm. is the best prescription yeah. and. The, their patients that will listen to them and will actually get up off of their butt are being encouraged to run. And we were talking at lunch about this. The media 
and the medical community all seem to be almost universally in love with the marathon as the ultimate expression of human goodness and uh, physical achievement. And it's just bizarre. It's weird. Some little 135 pound, five foot six guy yeah. we have runs a. Yeah, yeah we, have, we have skinny. Little they, bitty. They are athletes, tiny, but, but they're skinny. Frail, skinny people yeah. that can run a marathon yeah. in two and a half hours, yeah. but who cannot reach up and chin themselves yeah. one yeah. single time, yeah. even at a body weight of yeah. 135. And this is nonetheless supposed to be the pinnacle yeah. of physical achievement. Yeah. And I don't know how that's, yeah. you know, if you. If you're going to change lots and lots of people's minds, uh, you're going to have to figure out a way to penetrate popular culture through the avenue that popular culture has manipulated all these people. You've got to go through the media. You've got to get as many stories and as many pictures and articles about strength in as you possibly can. And I don't know how to do it. And the doctors and have to read your book. So, the doctors do have to yeah. read the barbell prescription. Yeah. They have to read. The and I would like to have the barbell prescription in German, if possible. Well, Herr Jund, <laughs> listen to me, Herr Jund. I think I'm send you this video. I think there's a big market for that in the medical community, and I only can talk now for the medical com community right. because, first of all, I'm a doctor. Right. I'm just starting to get an athlete and right. just starting. Uh, uh, to do uh, strength training myself. Right. So, but you, as a result, yeah. have seen the potential here of this yeah. approach yeah. to everything yeah. you deal with as a geriatrician. Yeah. Yeah. Everything you yeah. deal with as, as a geriatrician is mitigated yeah. Yeah. by strength training. Yeah. It is not mitigated by running. No. And this is a terribly important message. And uh, uh, those of you that regularly watch the podcast, read the books and the website, uh, already understand this, but your grandmother doesn't, your mom doesn't, your aunts and uncles, they don't know. And you can try to tell them, I mean, if they just ignore you, that's one thing, but um, it, it's got to come from somewhere and it might as well come from us. So let's just, you know, if we're going to get people's minds changed, they have to be offered the information. So let's, let's encourage each other to, to reach out to those folks who need to hear this. And, you know, your, your friends that are old runners, please tell them, you know, try something different. Just, let's, just let's keep on. Just keep on uh, talking about that keep, and, and keep with the message. Keep with the keep. message and uh, yeah, it's uh, perhaps it's, it'll penetrate. It'll it'll grow, I'm sure. Oh, let's hope so. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming visiting with us, Ivan. Ivan Nanchev is here from uh, the Federal Republic of Germany. What is it now? It's not the FDR anymore, is it? <laughs> I don't know. What do they call? It? I don't know what they call. Bundesrepublik Deutschland. They changed it back in '89, I yeah. guess. What a wonderful thing to have happen. But we appreciate him coming down to visit Thank with you, us. Sir. And uh, we appreciate you guys watching the podcast. And we'll see you next time.